Hello, welcome back to my channel. It has been a full month since I have edited a video or filmed a video and the momentum got lost a little bit there. So I have a lot of ideas for videos about note-taking and organizing thought and the PhD experience, but that all feels like too much for me right now. So instead, you're getting a vlog. A sort of reading vlog, a sort of like library vlog, a sort of like, will I buy a Kobo vlog? What will I load it with? I don't know how long this vlog will be. I just feel like getting back into the swing of filming videos and editing them. And this feels like a nice casual way to do so. To kick things off, it is like 30 degrees Celsius out. I think it's the hottest day of the year so far. I am in my comfort zone with this weather. It's sunny and hot and I feel like the earth has just put a blanket over my body wherever I go. I just feel so warm and safe and comforted by this weather. So I'm outside, I'm at a cafe, drinking my iced coffee and reading a book. Specifically, the book we're reading is Pure Color by Sheila Hetty, and I've got about 50 pages left, but I'm also out to return this to the library, so I gotta finish it up. And then I'm also gonna return these three books because I found them in other formats. I've started listening to this as an audiobook. I can't really say much about it so far, except that the narrator's accent is very strong and hard for me to understand. So welcome to the vlog. I'm gonna get to reading, and I'll see you shortly. I finished Pure Color. It was extravagant. It was about almost everything. Uh, I would say, for me, predominantly about what happens to us after death and maybe the end of the world as we know it, but also about uh, what is art and what is the point of art and is art innate to humanity, as well as just maybe the story of a lifetime and the different versions of person there can be and how they get along. Um, also family and tradition versus change and so many other things. So it was kind of everything. I think that I could have or perhaps should have read it a lot more slowly than I did <laughs> as it was. I was kind of like skimming sections. I guess I wasn't like particularly in the mood for this type of poetic uh, book, but it was, it was good. And I think perhaps our paths will cross again in the future. So I would recommend it. I would recommend Pure Color. I might, I might reread it someday. So now I'm going to go return my books to the library. <laughs> These are all of the books that I still have taken out from the library. Five of them, and they're due back in five days. So, conveniently, I could just read one a day and then return them all on time. I do think I have one more renewal for all of these, so I think I can renew them if I don't get through them, but I mean, I might as well try. I'm gonna start with To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. It's quite short. Well, okay, the pages are kind of long, but 138 pages. It's a novella. 
So I'm going to kick it off with this one, see if we can read at least this one in a day. And then I'm definitely going to try to read, I don't even know how to rank these. Like they all look so freaking good. I'm probably going to go for Hollow after that. And then Brickmakers. And then Detransition Baby. I also think I might pick up my Kobo today, which I'm super excited about actually. Uh, just like a couple months ago, I was kind of like, no, I don't need an ebook reader. I have my iPad, I have Kindle on my iPad. But the thing is, do I ever read on my iPad? No. I do schoolwork on my iPad, and so I don't read for pleasure on my iPad. It's the same thing with my computer. I do schoolwork on my computer, so I never play video games on my computer. I always play it on the TV because I want to be away from my computer for my leisure time. So I think I might get an e-reader that is dedicated to leisure reading. And I think I'm actually going to read a lot more books that way because they are lit, so I can read it in bed quite easily. My boyfriend has a Kobo, so I've been reading on his Kobo to get like a feel for it and see if I really want one. And it's quite enjoyable actually, but I think that I am going to get the waterproof Kobo so that I can read at the beach and in the bathtub, places where usually it's kind of risky to read paper books. Sometimes I'll live life on the edge and bring a library book into the bathroom bathtub. I've never dropped one, but I think I would feel safer with a waterproof Kobo. But considering that, I realized that it might be time for me to decide what kind of book collector I want to be. We're thinking of getting some larger bookshelves soon because literally all we have is two bookshelves this size and it is not enough. I already have like a lot of academic books that like my juggling and circus books um, and magic books are up on the top shelf. They already probably fit two shelves. My academic books, if you include plays, they probably fit at least three shelves. So like already just looking at books that I use for school, it's an entire one of these bookshelves. But then I also have books that I want to read for pleasure and that I love. So we're getting new bookshelves, all that to say. But I'm also getting a Kobo. And if I'm going to be reading a lot of books on my Kobo and I can own them di digitally, uh, it makes me start to wonder which books I should physically own because they do take up space, they do cost money. And here's what I think I've decided. I think that I will let myself buy like cheap used books because I can always put those back out into the world to a thrift shop or to a little library without much cost to myself. And I do still like reading paper books. But the books that I read that I really love and stay with me, I think I want physical copies of those and like nice physical copies. So if I can get a nice used edition or I'll just buy a new edition um, whenever I go into like a nice bookstore and I want to buy something but I don't want to like waste my money on something I don't end up liking, I'll just have a list of the books that I have loved and have stayed with me and I would really like to collect on my physical permanent bookshelves so that they look pretty and they represent me when people come over and also so that I have them for reference if I'm thinking about them in the future because by nature these will be books that I think about frequently. So I'm gonna make a list of all of the books that have affected me in that way and that I want to have on a physical shelf and that I want representing me. And then I'm just gonna bring that list with me whenever I go to a bookstore and that'll be the list that I can buy from. Everything else I will do my best to get either used or on my Kobo. And the reason I'm going with a Kobo and not a Kindle is because you can download library books onto your Kobo because they have overdrive. So that's what's, that's what's going on. So I'm gonna make that list of books I don't currently own that I would like to, and I'll let you know what's on there later. For now though, I'm gonna sit here and read To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. I've been trying to like walk every day or run, like walk on the days that I don't run, I guess, to try to meet my step goal for the day because I am so bad at meeting my step goal and especially bad at getting streaks. So we're going for a streak. 
and if a girl walked to Starbucks, um, I just love gamification and Starbucks is always like, ready, set, go, get these three drinks and get 125 bonus stars. So that's what we're doing. I figured I would also update you on my Kobo purchase. I purchased one, but not at Chapters as the previous video would suggest because they didn't have the white one and I am determined to get the white one. So I ordered it on Amazon, got the, got the white one and I got a little pretty case to go with it. So hopefully that comes later tonight and we can read on our Kobo. Okay, I'll talk to you then. Good morning. It is so early. I stayed up way too late last night watching Stranger Things and reading. So, but I have a presentation to give on my research at 8 a.m. So it's 7 a.m. I woke up early enough that I could talk to you and finish this vlog. Last night, as you saw, my Kobo came. She's so cute. Uh, I got this beautiful pink case for her. You can see what I've decided to start reading. Stylish Academic Writing by Helen Sword. Oops, this is like a sleep cover, so when you close it, it turns it off. When you open it, it turns it on. But I'm reading Stylish Academic Writing. I started reading in the bathtub last night, and then I went to my bed and I kept reading. It's a great book so far, so expect a video relevant to Stylish Academic Writing by Helen Sword in the future on this channel. Last night in the tub, I also decided to tempt fate and bring my library book in with me because I was so close to finishing. I only had like maybe 20 pages left at the most. She did not disappoint. This was a phenomenal novella and I will definitely be picking up the trilogy that Becky Chambers wrote after this. I think the first one is called A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Let's see if I can give you a sample of how phenomenal Becky Chambers writing is. The thing that I loved most about this book, as my friend Sophie said, it makes space travel really accessible to like the non-space traveler. So she really like gives you the little nitty gritty details of her type of space travel that you wouldn't think of but are so relatable if you have a body. For instance, when she's waking up out of, I think they call it torpor, but like they're freezing sort of state um, where they can travel for 23 years and only age like two years. When she's waking up out of that, she's describing the room she wakes up into. They've got separated rooms so that you've got that time and space to like re-find yourself after waking up from 23 years of sleep and like looking at yourself in the mirror for the first time and seeing that two years of aging etc and all the things that like you have to do your body like your fingernails have grown two years and your hair has grown for two years like dealing with that just bodily stuff and this part is a bit gross but like I really appreciated these gross little details so she says next I removed the nutrient drip from my arm bandaged myself and collected the few drops of blood that had floated free I then took a breath readied some therapeutic profanities and removed the catheter from the place where catheters go Ah, the glamour of space travel. So she doesn't make space travel elegant, she makes it like normal feeling, like something we could actually do. And it was those tiny little details that the main character notices that made this novel like or novella next level. Also just the framing of the book. You know at the very beginning of this book that something has happened with Earth or with them. Like there's some big issue that Earth needs to respond to, but you don't find out what that is until the very end of the book. So you're kind of on the edge of your seat the entire time. So I highly recommend this novella and Becky Chambers in general because although I haven't read any of her other books, the writing in this was like so clearly excellently crafted. And I think that's it for this vlog. I finished two books. I got my Kobo. The next library book I think I'll start in on will be either Hollow or Detransition Baby. 
it is Pride Month, so I could start off start it off with Detransition Baby. That might be a good idea. I've also started making my list of all of the books that I will purchase for my permanent collection, including Gutter Child by J.L. Richardson and In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado and Momo by Michael End and a few others. And this was fun. This is fun just bringing you along in my life. So I might do this again in the near future. We just bought a sofa in a box, which is supposed to come soon. So perhaps I will vlog that process and start reading on my new couch. But until then, I have some more academic videos coming up about how I edited a recent article that I wrote, as well as how to enjoy your dissertation writing process. Maybe one day I'll do an academic book tour as well. So stick around for those things. And until then, I will see you in the next video. Bye.